like to call the meeting, uh, council meeting to order for the district of Chatlin. Uh, can I have the opening statement read, please? As we gather today on the traditional territory of the Treaty 8 Nations to conduct the business of the District of Chetwin, we do so knowing that we are privileged to serve the citizens of this community and we shall endeavor to conduct our business in their best interests. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. Prior to uh, adoption of the agenda, is there any other new any other any new items up from council that we need to add to the agenda? Staff? Yes, Your Worship. I'll have a very short report in, in my reporting section. Okay. Councilor? Uh, mental health week, please. Okay. And I do have one uh, late item. Is that yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, facade improvement application will go under A6, uh, RA6. I'm not hearing any other new items. Uh, adoption of the agenda. So, motion to adopt with the addition of RA6. Second. All those in favor? Okay. Minutes. Minutes from April, April 13th, 2023, committee meeting held on that date. Accept. Second. Any discussion? Any omissions? Not hearing any. All those in favor? Carry. Minutes of the public hearing held on April 7, 2023. Motion to adopt. Any discussion? Any errors? All those in favor? Okay. Minutes of the regular council meeting held on April 17, 2023. Motion received. Second. Any omissions? Any corrections? I just. Councilor? Yep. Yeah. Sorry, I just have a quick question. I was. Um, in the acceptance of the proposal for the new apartment building, the uh, mayor and CAO were left to uh, for negotiations. Uh, I'm just curious what the negotiations would mean. Like, uh, would there what would be negotiated? They all already own the property and everything, don't they? Staff, we're just finding in the minutes. Just one second. Yep. Okay, that's just uh, signing off on the formal documents. When it comes to that part of the process, it's just a legislative requirement. No. The corporate officer, the mayor, sign off on, on the um, specific documents during the course of doing district business. The, the negotiation part of it would be uh, minor at best, but it's a chance for, for mayor and council to bring up any concerns during the process. Thank you. Any other questions or errors? All those in favor? Okay. We'll carry on with carry on with the number. We'll have four delegations. Tara Pender, BC's assessment overview of properties assessment and 2023 assessment role. Welcome. Good to see you again. Thank you. Good to see you. 
Thank you, uh, Your Worship, Council, Administration, for having me here tonight. Um, I'm here, my name is Taria Penner. I'm here with BC Assessment. I'm going to present a very high level overview of BC Assessment, um, what we do and how we work with you, how you work with us and, and uh, completing the assessment role. So to start, just giving a little bit of a background on the history of BC Assessment. It was established in 1974 under the Assessment Authority Act. Um, it was a result of a nonpartisan commission tasked with um, examining property assessment and taxation and the recommendation was to have uh, one crown corporation to establish what's called an assessment role. So BC Assessment is responsible for valuing all properties in BC um, and that is what's used um, for the stable base for local governments such as the District of Chetwind um, to use for property taxation purposes. Our commitment to British Columbia revolves around property owners uh, that can come in the form of residential as well as non-residential so that would be businesses um, and so forth, local governments and Indigenous nations and the provincial government. You may have heard of our product called the Assessment Roll. Um, the annual list of properties um, that we value, again, provides the real estate base for property taxation in British Columbia. We value just over two million um, properties on the roll and that value combined of all those properties is just over $2.72 trillion. The Assessment Roll would identify owners of a property, um, the value classification, um, and any exemptions that may apply to the property. And again, uh, the assessment role is what is delivered to local governments and taxing authorities such as yourselves um, for use for taxation purposes. There are many factors that impact uh, market value. Some of them um, are location. So that would be proxi proximity to amenities, transit, uh, employment, recreation. Land use controls, which local government district of Chetwin would have control over, meaning the official community plan, neighborhood plan, zoning, restrictive covenants. <clears throat> Land characteristics, so that would be like an area, shape, um, topography, access to utilities. Building characteristics, use, size, um, quality, age, condition. And of course, income potential, so that would be um, properties that have the ability to produce income such as an apartment building or a business. Land use um, can impact market value. Um, it may not happen overnight. It would be something that would be observed in the market. So um, rezoning um, could impact what's referred to as the highest and best use, which would mean what's legally permissible um, on the property. How can a property be utilized and what will the market pay for that property? Um, there would be redevelopment, market demand. Um, those types of things can impact market value. Again, it may not happen right away, but it would be something that we would observe to see any of those impacts on the market. BC Assessment has nine classifications for a property. The ones mo that you would likely most be familiar, familiar with would be class one residential. So that would be single family residential, uh, mobile homes, apartments, condominiums. Class four major industry, um, which would be land and improvements used for mining, um, processing, manufacturing. Class six, business and other, um, all land and improvements um, used basically that doesn't pertain to other property classes would typically fall into class six, um, commercial properties, offices, um, retail space. Uh, you may be familiar with class nine <coughs> farmland, that would probably be more the rural um, outside of the district of Chetwind, but um, for land, farmland is something that um, generally these areas see. Exemptions, there are two types of uh, Two common exemptions, permissive exemptions and statutory exemptions. Statutory exemptions would be defined under, uh, under the Act, so School Act, Community Charter, it typically pertains to ownership and use of the property. Um, those types of exemptions, BC Assessment, automatically applies as we go through the assessment rule cycle. 
Uh, permissive exemptions um, are decided through bylaw, so it would be through the district district of Chetwind would uh, um, look at bylaw for per, uh, permitting exemptions. So that examples of that might be a public park owned um, or held by an athletic or service club, um, property owned by a not for profit, um, revitalization um, exemptions. All of those are applied through uh, permissive exemptions. So key dates in the assessment cycle, um, the month of January, January 1st to January 31st um, is typically referred to as our inquiry period. Uh, we release our assessment roll, uh, it usually goes live January 1st, um, and from that period we're fielding phone calls. January 31st is the property assessment review panel deadline. Of course, it fall, if it falls on a weekend, it would be the next Monday. February 1st to March 31st would be the appeal period where we're processing the appeals, we're going through the property assessment review panel um, decisions and our revised role production. Um, therefore, after that, April 1st to September 30th would be our role production where we're monitoring the market. Um, we may have appeals at the second level through the property assessment appeal board, um, but most of it is, um, most of our work is looking at the market, looking at new construction, what's happening in the markets. And then October 1st to December 31st would be our role production, where we're putting a final um, touch on the role, um, finalizing the role, and then it goes live January 1st. Some completed role highlights provincially, we saw about a 12% increase from 2022. Um, <clears throat> we saw a little bit of a decrease in non-market change. Non-market change would be uh, new construction. And 77% of the province um, is classified under class one residential which uh, makes up about $2.1 trillion provincially. Oops. Try again. The 2023 completed role for Chetwin specific, we saw about a 6% increase from 2022. Again, a little bit of a decrease in non-market change. And about 63% of Chetwin is valued under class one uh, residential. There's just over 1,400 properties um, in uh, Chetwin, which is a very minimal increase from 2022. On average, the residential single family dwelling um, or single family residential saw about a 7% increase, 25% for strata, and about a 12% for commercial industrial. So again, these are observed changes from July 1st, 2021 to July 1st, 2022. Um, and that's observed through sales and the demand, demand in the market. So the appeal process, as mentioned, from January 1st to January 31st um, is our inquiry period. January 31st is the uh, deadline to appeal the property. Um, after that appeal, it would go to the first level of review, which is the property assessment review panel. From there, from February 2nd to March 15th, we conduct the hearings. Um, and then decisions after that are keyed to our revised assessment role, um, which goes out by the end of March. And then April 30th, which we just passed, is the, well actually today is the deadline for the second level as April 30th fell on a Sunday. So uh, today is the deadline for the Property Assessment Appeal Board. Um, so we'll kind of see where things are going with that. It takes a great deal of collaboration, um, especially with local government and as I said with our, with our key stakeholders um, to produce the assessment role. There's many ways that we can collaborate. Um, we do have a really um, comprehensive website that we're constantly developing for information. And um, we also have, which is on the next slide, we do have a share file program that we set up with local governments so that we can, we can share information. Uh, building permits is a really big example of how we can share that information. Um, that certainly helps us add non-market change, which is new, constru new construction, to the role, um, which certainly helps um, the taxing authorities. 
Again, the website, we do have a, a, a good website, um, Assessment Search. You may be familiar with it. Um, we can look up a lot of information and we're continuing to develop it, looking at market trends, maps, um, sales in the area. Um, it's definitely growing. And then of course there's additional resources. Um, the Property Assessment Review Panel um, has a really good website, the Appeal Board, Property Assessment Appeal Board, and then of course there's Homeowner, homeowner Grant and Property um, Tax Deferral Program. And I will turn it back over if there's any questions. Questions? Staff, you guys got any questions? Very important stuff. <laughs> I'll say something. Uh, thank you for the information. It's, I, I'm in real estate, so my clients do find it very interesting. Um, and it was interesting to find out that we have about 1,400 properties in town, uh, which I didn't know before, so thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, Tira. That's important information that everybody needs to know. And I'd just like to know uh, uh, where is your office located at? So I'm based out of Prince George. We do have an office in Terrace, Prince George, Williams Lake, and Dawson Creek. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, thank you for your presentation. Thank you very much. Yes. Okay, uh, we have another presentation by Sergeant Juanis Antonio. So, what do you got for us? Everything's good? Uh, yes, everything's good. She was trying to steal this thing. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Do we have the taser? <laughs> no, Your Worship, we do not. <laughs> Thank you. Ani, Tansi, Miigwech, Your Worship, Council members, Treaty 8 Nation members, and fellow citizens of Chatwind. Hello. I am Wani Santonio Ni Stevens. I am Don Juba Atik Machine in Shnabek. I am Kwan Dondadam. Nokmis Louise Bonham. And I am Nokmis Arthur Stevens. My name is Wani Santonio Ni Stevens. I am from the Atik Machine in Shnabek and First Nations. Uh, my totem is uh, Bear Clan. And uh, my grandmother was Louise Bonham, and my grandfather is Archie St Arthur Stevens. Thank you very much for having me here, and I do acknowledge that you have very busy lives. You have a lot on your plate, and I do thank you for everything you do for us and our, and our city and our nation every day, everything that you do. I'm here just to present, just, <laughs> I'm here to present the uh, last quarter's initiatives. I don't think I'll ever do this without shaking. I'm so nervous. <laughs> Um, I wish my presentation looked as good as hers. <laughs> um, talk about last quarter's initiative. So we've gone through the whole year now. Uh, our, our fiscal year goes from uh, April to March, April 1st to March 31st. Um, I do apologize that I'm a month late uh, presenting this information to you, um, but uh, it's, it's getting to you at least. <laughs> Uh, so we started out with um, a number of initiatives. We'll start off with the road safety um, initiatives, which started off with the uh, impaired enforcement. And I think I've given you a copy of these. You may have this. Um, so the impaired enforcement that we've done, we've um, hoped to get at least 12 throughout the year. Um, we were able to get 32, which is very good um, for our members. <laughs> I'd like to see that come down because the more that we see on the road, it's more dangerous for our citizens, right? It's more dangerous that we have people out there who are not taking the care and concern of their driving habits, right? And their, and their alcohol or, or drug consumption. So we're looking at reducing that. We're gonna, this year, look a little bit more at um, presentations and education. Uh, we're gonna be doing that through the high schools, um, mostly. Uh, we need, just looking at trying to start young, right? Giving, them, giving the kids that information. Distracted driving. Uh, we didn't get any of this. Uh, we didn't. We weren't able to uh, um, stop anybody who was uh, driving while distracted, and that includes, you know, drinking your coffee or using your electronic devices or your radios. Um, we tend to give people a little bit of a break with their coffee because, let's face it, sometimes that's why they're still on the road, and not in the ditch, right? Um, but uh, we're going to look at a little, doing a little bit of a different um, process. We're going to look at doing some 
road safety in a more covert way um, to try and stop people from texting and driving or using their electronic devices while driving or distracted driving, just in, in general, distracted driving. Uh, so that'll be for the next year's initiatives. Um, so it's not for a lack of being on the road. Our motor vehicle violations this year, we, we um, were able to stop people from, or at least um, ticket people for motor vehicle violations 467 times. Um, that's uh, a little more than our projected goal of 300. Uh, so we're still out on the road, we are visible, we are out there, um, we are slowing vehicles down or at least changing their driving behaviours. Uh, just find it a little bit more difficult and talk to the members about this, about trying to um, figure out ways of how are we going to stop people from texting and driving because they are out there, they are doing it. Every single one of us can say that they've seen somebody else do it, if not have done it themselves. And, I'm not, I'm not gonna lie, I'm, I'm a violator as well. It's that thing of putting it in the back seat and now that's what we do is put it in the back seat and it's gone, can't touch it, right? Um, we'll move on to the next initiative which is reducing substance abuse, uh, alcohol and drug seizures. Uh, this is down a little bit, we are, our projected goal was 20. Throughout the year we were able to get 14 drug and alcohol seizures. That's gonna be a little bit difficult again as we discussed, as I discussed the last time I was here back in April. Um, with the new three-year plan um, with um, the uh, dec decriminalization of drugs. It's, we will not be seizing as many drugs. Uh, so what we're going to go towards is more of a preventative, proactive, proactive approach with education again. So we're going to look at using that as our marker of, um, of, of how we're doing as a police organization within Chetland. Um, we will still keep on the seizures as one of our as one of our um, uh, indications of success or, or means work, I guess. Um, but we're, we want to do more of a proactive measure as well. Going on to the next initiatives, which is communication. Um, for attending meetings, our detachment has in total attended 80 meetings, which our goal was 30 of last year. Now that's going to improve because COVID has um, uh, the, the COVID protocols have lessened and we've opened up more. Um, so we were able to attend more meetings and be in partic participating in more meetings. Um, and these are not just in-person meetings, these are also still via Zoom or MS Teams. Um, uh, but I, I find that we're doing less and less of the MS Teams and the Zoom meetings, that we're doing more in-person. You know, it's been good to come in here and do our interagency meetings right here in the, um, in, in the um, uh, chamber um, office here. Uh, victim services referrals were up um, and we had a total of 100 contacts uh, this year. Again, that's up from 30. COVID would be a little bit responsible for that as well. However, I do believe having an actual full-time person in there, well, we had a part-time person in there for most of the year. Um, that'll be moving over to full-time here. Um, I think that number is also going to go up because there'll be more hours in the day that, that our victim services employee will be able to contact um, you know, our, our victims of crime. Um, she is shared with Hudson's Hope as well, and Hudson's Hope has seen a little bit of increase in um, contacts as well. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see what happens in the next year. Uh, this will be the first year that we have a 40 hours per week um, victim services, which if you look at most districts, this is slightly unheard of, so we'll count ourselves lucky for having this. Um, currently our human resources, we still have one detachment commander. Um, we have two NCOs, uh, which are our supervisor investigators. We do have six general duty investigators. That's one down from last month. We will be down to five here shortly. There's a staffing action for one of our junior members to go over to um, Saskatchewan. And we have one Indigenous policing um, uh, member. It says supervisor, but he's a, he's a constable. Uh, currently, one of the initiatives that we're looking at doing is um, one of the... Um, things that I'd be looking at adding in would be adding a prolific offenders initiative. And that's where we'd be looking at mostly keeping traffic, track of our prolific offenders by ways of uh, curfew checks or um, monitoring where our prolifics are living if they're not on any conditions. And this is the hope is to reduce the public mischief that we're having within the community. Um, I know this has been something that's been on uh, uh, my plate as well as Ellen's plate. Um, of how, how we're going to reduce this. You've seen the tagging out there, you've seen the lights going down, and we've been working um, again with the district to try to reduce that. Um, we've been able to get a little bit of a headway, um, but I think we need to look at doing a little bit more as well. So we're going to try and reduce that in that way. 
We also have um, the uh, Citizens on Patrol and Rural Watch that I'm working with um, John Veteran, Dan Rose, and a, a gentleman by the name of uh, Art Seidel. Um, they have what's called the South Peace Crime, or South Peace, oh, I should have wrote this down. <laughs> um, it is, it is a, a community policing initiative uh, to reduce crime. It's a kind of a crime reduction strategy. Um, that stops about New Eris. So we're trying to get ourselves, Chetwind, into that um, society so that we don't have to create a new society and all the, the time that it would take to get that. We can just try and hop in on that. Um, obviously, there's some um, loop, things that I have to jump over to try and get it started. Um, one of them would be a civilian coordinator, and that's something that uh, right now I'm actively looking for, um, someone that's going to be in the community that would be invested, that has um, a little bit of extra time, maybe a little bit more than just a little bit of extra time to invest, especially at the beginning, to help me start this up here in the, in, in the community. So I have uh, a meeting on Tuesday of this week coming up, or the second week coming up, Wednesday, the third week, and then Thursday, the fourth week coming up to uh, try and get this all started. That's all in Dawson Creek. Um, they've already got it well established. Alberta's got a very well established program. We're going to try and work together to try and get it uh, here in Chetwind. And I believe this will help out as well. Um, you know, with Canfor closing down, we'll have some people who are interested in becoming volunteers for this program as well. Some people that were close to that wanting to retire, but kind of got a little bit pushed into it a little bit. I'm hoping that they'll be able to um, help us out a little bit here as well. Um, just going to look through my notes here quickly. I think that is about it that I can think of right now for the quarterly report. Thank you, Denise. Uh, any questions for you, Denise? Councillor Dick? Hi, how are you today? Um, there's been several communities introducing um, drug consumption bylaws for public uh, areas. Uh, do you think we require anything like that in Chetland, or is it not really an issue? I think it would be well worth discussing, absolutely. Um, we have a large, well, let's just speak about Spirit Park, right? Um, that would be a, a very interesting place to start talking about would, when you're talking about bylaws, right? Is, is your parks, your recreation areas. Um, when you look at the legislation right now, um, the legislation does take into account cannabis use in these areas, but there's nothing, no legislation for other drug uses. Any other questions? I have one more. Okay. Um, just one more. Um, has the um, shelter impacted and helped out with the, any of the homeless situation here? Is there, is there enough help there for, for those people? I think the shelters helped out quite a bit, like enormously, especially um, we, we have a big distance, a, a large travel area when you think about coming from here to Moberly Lake, going out to um, the most western part of our area as well as the most eastern part of our area. And um, people who tend to come into Chetwind um, they don't often have the ability to, they get into Chetwind and then they get stuck into Chetwind, right? And, and then they're, they have nowhere to go. Um, I think it's helped out greatly for that aspect. It's helped out with our most vulnerable people that otherwise would be in a situation of, of dire. They, they're not just their health is at risk, but their, their lives are at risk. It has helped out greatly. We are working very closely with them because again, there's the, there's the staff safety as well that we have to be cognizant of. Um, there are times when our most vulnerable are in a situation where they need more help than the shelter can give and they'll still end up at the shelter. Um, so they, they work well with the, um, with the RCMP. They're very, they've had no concerns with calling us. Sometimes people worry about calling the police. They don't want to bug the police or they don't want to, there are some people that actually don't want to call because they don't want to be seen as repeat callers. But we've worked well with them not telling them, yeah, definitely call us and, and don't be afraid. Um, it's definitely something that has been necessary for a very long time and very glad to see that it's here. And I think it's worked very well. Thank you. 
Council uh, Smith. Pardon? McDonald. Oh, McDonald. McDonald. Sorry. <laughs> okay, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> Mr. Smith. <laughs> like, okay, yeah. uh, I just wanted to say thank you. Your numbers are always so impressive. Um, I'm happy to see that you guys have sought so much throughout the community, um, especially when it comes to impaired driving. Uh, I look forward to more of your initiatives towards the distracted driving. I too see that on a daily basis as I'm going. <laughs> Um, and I would like to ask for a little bit more information on the South Peace Rural Crime Watch um, group that you're talking about. So if you wouldn't mind providing that would be great. Not tonight or anything, but in the future. Thank you, Council McDonald. We have a meeting on the Rural Crime Watch coming up on Wednesday of two weeks from now. I just know it's like the second week, third week, fourth week, and this one day removed. Um, so what next, not this coming Wednesday, not next Wednesday, but the Wednesday after we have a meeting for the South Peace Rural Crime Watch program. So I'll be able to tell you a little bit more about that once I get that information as well. Sergeant, um, Council McDonald basically said what I had to say. Uh, thank you for the work that you do. And I'm curious if you're gonna be publicly advertising uh, to our citizens for the Citizens on Patrol. Um, I, I suppose you don't really know at this point. We will be, I'll have a meeting on Tuesday of next week regarding the Citizens on Patrol program um, in Dawson Creek with the detachment commander in Dawson Creek as well as with John Vetter and the, uh, and then, and then, so that's the first meeting. The meeting afterwards will be with the Citizens on Patrol. After which I will be doing a public um, request for um, applications for the Citizens on Patrol. Um, it's a little bit of putting the cart before the horse because we really do need to get that that primary coordinator in in place as well. Um, but I'm kind of trying to doing it all at the same time, you know, trying to get the coordinator as well as the people involved at the same time. And that's more of me just trying to get this program started. Even if it starts off with two people, that is better than nothing right now. Sorry, one more thing I'd like to add. Um, Coming up, there's a, uh, a program that RCMP are able to apply for funding. Um, I won't go into exactly where it's coming from, but um, there is up to um, $75,000 that attachment can get for, and I'll be applying for a vehicle for the Citizens on Patrol. Hopefully I can get that. So that's, that's, that's my goal. If anybody wants to help me with my artful articulation and writing skills, I would be very much help, appreciative of that. Ellen? <laughs> <laughs> I would be more than happy to help you with that. <laughs> Any questions? Any more questions? Good. I have one. I was just staffing. Uh, I know you're sending one or one's going away. I was uh, just staffing because I know uh, throughout Canada here we're having issues with the RCMP recruiting. So how's that going right now? Yeah, I don't know exactly how much information you know about staffing, but at this point right now, it is expected that we'll run below our 100% capacity. Um, there's what they say, the quote, new 100% capacity. So regardless of our 100% capacity is 11 members, um, we will likely be expected to operate with um, about 75% before we start thinking of new members. Hey, thank you. I think we're good. Thank you once again. Thank it was you. a pleasure. Thank you, Miigwech. Okay, uh, bylaws. District of Chetwin off uh, street parking bylaw number 931 2010 and amendment thereto requires repealing. Motion to repeal. Second. Discussion. Vote. Smith? Yeah. <laughs> I just have a question. Is Are we just repealing this because it's now in the new bylaws? Yes, it's all covered in the new zoning bylaws. Okay. Can you please pinpoint the uh, prime details that have changed since the 2010 bylaws? Uh, there's a there's a wide variety of them. Most of them are, are mainly almost I'll say 
clerical. There's a, there, uh, there was a lot of focus on, on the difference between a, cler uh, uh, a banded vehicle and a derelict vehicle. And we don't have them really highlighted as to the changes, but most of them are like that. There's modernization of, of language. Uh, the actual parking zones don't fundamentally change. Uh, Desiree, can you add anything to that? Um, I don't think anything was changed with respect to, you know, the required number of spaces based on the zone. Nothing functionally was changed. It's just now in the zoning bylaw. So it's yeah. basically all the same. There might be a, the odd clerical thing that was changed, but nothing else was changed. Yeah. Okay. No more discussion. All those in favor? Okay. District of Chetland Financial Plan 2023-2027 bylaw number 116-2023 requires adoption. I'll make the motion to adopt bylaw number 116-2023. Oh, sir. Discussion about it. Um, not seen any. All those in favor? Okay. District of Chetland 2023 tax rate bylaw number 1161 2023 requires adoption. Motion to adopt. Second. Discussion? Financial officer, I got one uh, with the tax that we do have. What does that bring into the Chetland to the district? The percentage, I guess. Yeah. Do we have an idea? I'm sorry, Your Worship. I'm not sure I know exactly what it is you're asking. Okay. Uh, with this adoption uh, of the tax rate, what is our rate going to be given to our citizens? What is that rate? Right the, the rate increase? Yeah. As we uh, discussed at the previous meeting, um, this financial plan and the tax rate bylaw reflect a 2% increase on That's residential right. and business taxes. That's what I was uh, yeah. inquiring about. So do you, we have just a basic idea because uh, when we do uh, talk about taxes, uh, the citizens will be watching or asking questions. And to me, I say, what what are we taking in when we increase that 2%? Because 2% is way below what the, well, not way the, below, but it's below what the, the provincial averages. Yeah, uh, a 2% rate increase will, uh, for the average homeowner in Shetland is about $25 a year. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. All right, uh, if there's in, no other questions, uh, all those in favor? Okay. On to committee reports. How are we doing? Uh, any reports right now? For Julia and Councilor Nelson. So on April 24th, 25th in Vancouver, just last week at the Values Driven Economy Conference, the First Nations Major Project Coalition uh, demonstrated how the inclusion of Indigenous nations throughout a company's value chain is a competitive advantage to getting major projects approved, funded, built, and operated profitably. Uh, myself and Mayor Coutre attended. I will say that it was uh, eye-opening and I definitely learned a lot. There's a little bit more literature here for you. Indigenous partnerships and values are increasingly driving business deals, particularly those related to meeting 2050's net zero targets. Most of the proposed solutions for achieving net zero carbon emissions by 2050 rely on using Indigenous lands and resources to build clean energy infrastructure and extraction projects. And these projects that we got to hear about throughout the couple days of conference uh, included non-emitting electrical generation power plants, 
expanded transmission lines, hydrogen fuel production, and new mines to provide the raw materials needed for electric vehicle battery protect production. Um, all I can say is it was a great honor to attend, and I would recommend that any of my colleagues who wanted to go next year definitely should. Thank you. Any other reports? Uh, from the mayor's perspective, just to uh, highlight a few things that uh, Julia, you know, it was uh, attended by 1,500 delegates. From a history point, uh, I believe they had a table at the Natural Resource Forum seven years ago on the, uh, this uh, project. And to go seven years, this was the sixth annual uh, uh, conference, and it was attended by 1,500, and some of the speakers were from Australia, the UN, and the former uh, finance, I think, of the United States. So we were, uh, the conference is uh, attracting uh, international uh, uh, speakers to come and ask, asking the coalition for their uh, audience. So it was one of the greatest things that happened with, uh, with the First Nations and at the forefront. And we feel it every day here uh, when we talk about uh, permits and all that about how we deal with our uh, uh, First Nations. And uh, it, it was uh, important to for us to know that uh, there is uh, people out there that are advocating or uh, permitting, which I talked to uh, a couple of the ministers there and Enbridge. And so they, these were all at this event and Premier Evie was there too, so he was presenting. So he spoke to the uh, 1,500 delegates. So, and uh, one other thing that happened there, uh, we found out was, uh, Green energy, and uh, we were talking about windmills and stuff like that. It was, it was quite a quite a, a thing to know that Australia, they gave land to the indigenous group, and it's something like just a lease, and what they had there was just, and he spoke about it. He says, we had no trees, we had no water, but we had wind. So he spoke like that, and uh, what, uh, what happened with wind was turbines, right? Wind turbines. So they put that on that land, and they're generating uh, energy. And uh, from that, it's an investment of $100 billion that's going to come out of that. And from that, they're going to generate uh, funds for hydrogen. And what hydro hydrogen brings, you need water. So what you bring water in from the ocean because they've got the, the wind energy, the turbines, so they're going to use that uh, economic uh, stuff coming from the windmills to generate or get pumps and pump water into their land. So what that ha well, how that happens is you get the water there, and then pretty soon you're generating water and then you start growing things, right? So it was very inspiring to have nothing and then to spring up something that's uh, valuable in green energy. So that, that was uh, pretty important for us to hear. <clears throat> and as for uh, my, uh, I didn't, I was pretty busy for the last little while here, so I didn't have enough time to formulate anything with the UNDRIP conference that I attended on the 27th of uh, April, which included uh, the Blueberry uh, decision. They gave us a, uh, kind of a high level and a, just a perspective on the historic event that's happening in Blueberry with Yehi versus the province. So that part, I believe I'll have a little bit more on my next uh, report, which is very important to our region and uh, to uh, Canada. So uh, anyway, with that, uh, I'll be done. And uh, it was great to, for both conferences that I attended. Thank you, Julia, for your report on that. Any others? We're good with the reports. Go ahead. Thank you, Your Worship. Well, I have an actual fun one now. It's my great pleasure to formally recognize and warmly welcome Crystal Hilton, who's joining us in her new role as, as the finance slash human resources coordinator. And it's it, we're so happy to see her here. And 
Now going into slightly less happy ones, uh, the fire chief this afternoon about 3.15 enacted an open fire ban on, on our fire service area. Uh, because you guys will all be asked about this because it's a hot topic, open uh, backyard fires like, like your backyard 0.5 meter by 0.5 meter fires are still allowed. But because we've already had a 100 hectare fire at the north end of Moberly Lake over the weekend, and so the conditions are unusually dry for this time of year, as I'm sure we've all noticed. Uh, we felt it was best to be abundantly cautious and enact the fire ban. If we get some rain, and in the two week forecast, there's really no rain for, forecasted at all at this point. So, but if we, we, if we do resume some, some more moist conditions, we can look at, at allowing burning permits again. Uh, we're also back into the loop with BC wildfire updates uh, the BC flood forecasts and all the other fun spring things we look forward to in, in the North Peace region. And that's it for now. Thank you, Steve. We're good with the reports. Uh, adoption, I motion to accept uh, all reports as? So moved. Second. All in favor? Okay. Uh, we've got uh, discussion items. Email from the Chapman Chamber of Commerce, dated April 21st, 2023, letter of support. I'll make that motion that council provide a letter of support to the Chapman Chamber of Commerce for its grant application to the Northern Development Initiative Trust Love Northern BC program for the development of a new shop local initiative. Second. Any discussion on that? All those in favor? Okay. Email from the Community Futures Peace, Liar, dated April 2023, letter of support. I'll make that recommendation that council provide a letter of support to Community Futures Peace the Yard for its grant application to the Northern Development Initiative Trust, Rural Business and Community Recovery, Regional Business Liaison Program for Funding of Full-Time and two Half-Time Regional Business Liaison Positions in the Northeast Region. Second. Discussion? All those in favor? All those in favor? Okay. Email from the Chetland Public Library, dated April 26, 2023, letter of support. I'd like to remove myself from the bill. Conflict of interest. I'll motion that council provide a letter of support to the Chetland Public Library for its application for a community adult literacy project grant for a literacy for life program and good food community kitchen. Discussion on the item? All those in favor? Carry. No correspondence, information. I want to I eight. Anything to be extracted to discuss? I have a quick question on I one. Yes, go ahead. Uh, who develops the list of potential uh, nominee, like nominees? Do we have an idea? CEO? Okay, Councillor, uh, once uh, we uh, get that information, we will uh, give it to every uh, Councillor and to the public. Do you have that? Pardon me? Okay, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Thanks a lot. <laughs> Thank you for not throwing in. <laughs> okay, we'll get that information in two seconds. One, two, ease up. I didn't know how to throw it. Tells me that. No rush, it can be at a later date. And I'm not sure which one you're asking about. You're asking oh, about the FCM, the compass? Because yeah. I want is the compass date April yeah. 6th, right? Yeah. Sorry, right, maybe I wrote on the wrong one. Okay. Which it was the 
nonprofit. You know, I've got to try and find it too. Yeah. I'll, I'll email. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> Is there any other items that uh, we'd like to discuss from the information? Not any? We will distribute that information to Councilor McDonald and everybody else, and once she gives us the correct uh, question, I guess. Okay, accept information. Motion to accept. Motion to accept. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Carry. Reports for action. RA1. Statement of financial plan. Or statement of financial information. I'll make the recommendation that council that the that the council of the D district of Chatwin approves all statements and schedules included in this statement of financial information produced under the Financial Admin Information Act. I'll second. Discussion. Not hearing any. All those in favor? Carry. R A two. Sewer lift station upgrade 2023 capital budget amendment. I'd like to make a recommendation that the infrastructure renewal plan, also known as our capital budget, be amended to reflect the sewer lift station upgrades project that will now occur in 2023 and 2024 in the amounts of $1,000,000 and $762,500 respectfully, that is, and that the project is 100% grant funded. I'll second. Any discussion on that? All those in favor? Okay. RA3, Facade Improvement Application and Development Permit. I'll make the recommendation that Council authorize a Facade Improvement Program application for Northern Lights College Daycare Facility Address 4916 52nd Avenue Southwest, Chowett, BC, as indicated in attachment A to this report. Authorize the Mayor Corporate Officer to execute a partnering agreement with Northern Lights College, address 4916 52nd Avenue Southwest, Chowett, BC, and approve the issuance of development permit number 02 2023 to Northern Lights College for an expansion to the daycare located at 4916 52nd Avenue Southwest, Lot 95, Plan 24719, District Lot 3103, Peace River District, included as attachment B to this report. Mr. Smith, second. Any discussion on it? I have more of a process question than I do this particular application. Is there a limit to how many of these uh, agreements we can enter into? Not that I'm aware of. Oh, actually, uh, <laughs> for, oh, or for the facade. I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah, yeah, sorry. I, I thought you were talking about development permits in general. For facade improvement, uh, there's only four per calendar year, mm -hmm. and, and we're we're limited to that number. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Councilor McDonald, any Councilor uh, Nelson? And if we approve this one, mm -hmm. where are we at out of four? This is, we're at number three now, correct me if I'm wrong, Ellen? On your list in front of you tonight, it's one of three that you will be seeing tonight, and we will have one left for a 2023 plan. Thank you. Okay. All those in favor? Okay. Zoning Amendment Bylaw Number One One Six Two Twenty Twenty Three. Oh. oh, okay. Oh, yeah, the facade. You're right. We had what? How many was that? <laughs> okay. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, 
the sod improvement application development uh, permit. I'd like to motion that council authorize the facade improvement program application for Tansy Friendship Center Society for the Tatawa Emergency Shelter, address 5301 South Access Road, Chetwin, BC, included as attachment A to this report. Authorize the mayor and corporate officer to execute a partnering agreement with Tansy Friendship Center Society, address 5301 South Access Road, Chetwin, BC, and approve the issuance of development permit number 03 2023 to Tansy Friendship Center Society, Katawa Emergency Shelter, address 5301 South Access Road, legal description lot 4, block 3, plan PGP 9154, district lot 398. Peace Riverland District included as attachment B to this report. Second. Any discussion on it? All those in favor? Carry. This one now, Kim. <laughs> <laughs> zoning amendment bylaw number 1162 2023. Chetland Zoning Amendment Bylaw Number 1162-2023 be introduced and given first and second readings and further that a public hearing be scheduled for May 23rd, 2023 to obtain public input on District of Chetland Zoning Amendment Bylaw 1162-2023. Second. Discussion? Not seeing any, all those in favor? Carried. Okay. Yeah. Councillor Deck is excusing himself for RA6. That's a new item. I will move. Are you going to move? Okay. Oh, so. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Sorry. Uh, motion that council operates the facade improvement program application for ATS Chan Holdings Limited, Chapman Dental Clinic, address 5032 49th Northwest, Chapman, BC, included as, as attachment A to this report, and authorize the mayor and corporate officer to execute a partnering agreement with ATS Chan Holdings Limited, address 5032 49th Avenue, Northwest, Chapman, BC. Discussion on I have one uh, because of the question being asked on how many we have, and we have four. Is there a stipulation in any in our policies, or is it just uh, the dome that we have to put up? What is the purpose of only four? Um, so earlier in the season, um, I wrote a report to Council to apply to what they call an insurance trust for a maximum of twenty thousand dollars, and then we distributed that throughout the year and asked them through the permitting applications and including the requirements. So it's based on each community and the maximum is the one. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, all those in favor? Carry on. Sir. Good. Thank you. Reports for information. March count payable. Uh, reports for information. Prior to that, who's going to win the cup? Okay. That's it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> March count payable checks. I'll make the recommendation uh, that the check register for the month of March 2023 totaling $952,862.80 be received. Second. Yeah. Any questions? Yes. I was Council just wondering, there was uh, 19000 to Tansy. I was just wondering what that was for. Sorry, I didn't hear which one you were asking. Tansy. 
Tansy? Yeah, I think it was like 19,000. I'm just trying to find it again. Was it like 19? Oh, 91,490 uh, uh, last page. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that's the, the second half of the, uh, the first year of the emergency shelter <laughs> program. So we advanced them 100,000 originally. We've been reimbursed for that. And then they filed all their expense statements. And that's the amount that was reimbursed to us. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions or discussion on it? Uh, go ahead, Council Beck. And just to clarify, that's all grant money, right? 100%. Yes, it was 100% grant. Okay, thank you. Okay, all those in favor? Okay. New business. New business. New on wheels. No, it's mental health. Mental week. health. Oh, okay. I, I, I wrote it down as ADT. <laughs> conflicting dates online when I looked. We did just hear from Enbridge who uh, shared that it was May 1st to 7th, but um, I'm not sure if it is this week and uh, whether it is or isn't. I'm just wondering if there's something you can share with our residents uh, in regards to supporting our mental health and. Um, even if we are late, perhaps we can still share something in uh, on our website, in the coffee talk, just to acknowledge it uh, as it is very important. I uh, would be more than happy to put something out on website and Facebook and that kind of thing. If you know, coffee talk, um, uh, if, if you want as well. You know. but yeah, we'll, we'll get stuff out there. And okay. we can go through, well, we yes. could go through Peace FM as well. Sure. Thanks. Hey, thank you. Questions for Jen? I would just like to add with whatever advertising you do put out, um, that definitely share some resources so people who are truly suffering from mental health um, ha have some lifelines and potentially professionals that they can call. We will try to find something to implement today. We did council work. Thank you. Okay, thank you for that. Right. Okay, public questions. Do we need to accept your uh, uh, CL? We're, we're good with her, just that uh, is it a report or the, do we? Move on. I don't think we need a motion okay, for that. Okay, thank you. I'm, I'm good That's that. what I was replying, I guess. Thank you for that. Uh, public questions? Okay. So, uh, your for worship, the public? On, on your next item on the agenda, the closed council meeting, uh, yes. Sergeant Antonio Oni Stevens has left. I, I think she's on a call, so we don't need to, to convene a closed meeting now. Okay, as we accepted the agenda, uh, we we're going to have to make an amendment to that agenda? Yes. Okay. Yes, we will. So I will entertain a, a motion to, to amend the agenda. Motion to amend. Second. Okay. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Janet. Okay. Uh, I guess adjournment. I think that's next. Thank you. And Excuse me, Your Worship. The, uh, we, we need to vote on the motion to amend the agenda as well. Oh, great, great. Okay, let's back up then. Thanks, Steve. That's why you're our only employee. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's make a uh, motion. Uh, vote on the motion of the amendment for the agenda. All those in favor? Yes, thank you. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> hey, thank you. Done.
94.5, Chetland, 1041 Dawson Creek, around the Radio Player Canada app, Peace FM. And I have a special guest in the studio with me right now, Connor from Violet Night. How are you doing? Great. How are you? It's uh, great to have you here. Um, you guys have been really, really busy over the last little while. Um, yeah. But before we get into all that, if people don't know who you are or who Violet Night is, could you give us a little bit of uh, background on that? Sure. Um, Violet Night is a band that we started in 2016. Um, and I'm from the community originally. I think most people listening are probably familiar with me. Um, if not, we have toured the U.S. and we've had a few records come out. Uh, we had an EP come out first called I Hope You're Well. We had a record called Colors of You and a record called Antiheroes. And now we've got a new single called Head Trip and we've got a whole new EP coming out um, in the future after that. Uh, we've had quite a run of success lately with a multitude of things. And I think that really has people who weren't sure who we were, like after we hit top 40 on radio or like now they definitely, I think might know who we are, you know, I, I just cause it, it seems like it. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. You mentioned, uh, you guys have been hitting the charts recently with, uh, with antiheroes. How's, how's that been for you? Well, that record, it's been pretty surreal. That record initially, like, it charted to, um, the Antiheroes record was number nine in Canada and 20 in the U.S. And then it's kind of interesting how it all came together with, if you were the ocean going to radio, like ending up on Sirius and in the top 40 and everything else. Um, during the pandemic, I was kind of in a bit of, uh, not in a slump, but I was in a place that just wasn't, I wasn't as focused and motivated and driven as I usually am. And anybody who knows me knows that I'm like, cra like I'm almost neurotic. Like I'm crazy hardworking, very driven and very motivated. Uh, very, very much the type to, um, to, you know, to, I, I want to succeed. And so really to me, it's just a matter of um, if you work hard, I think you can succeed. And I don't think that um, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm not somebody who believes that circumstance can dictate whether you succeed or not. I really think that a ba for example, uh, a band coming from a town like Chetwind, uh, charting in the top 40 with the likes of Imagine Dragons and Harry Styles and 21 Pilots is probably something most people thought would never happen. But we, we did that earlier this year. Um, but when I was in that lull, I fortunately, through our manager, networked with some really incredible people in the industry. And I think we've had a lot of success, but to me, it's always important to remember that I, I, I'm the face and voice of the, the thing, but I'm just one component of a much bigger uh, team. And I'm really grateful to just have uh, those real, there's such incredible people to work with, you know, like if I didn't get the I, w I was mentored by a fellow named Aaron Allen, and he's like a top 40 writer who kind of mentored me with writing and getting the fire lit in me again. And um, yeah, that was huge. And then our manager reached out to a friend of his who was affiliated with Universal Music. And he was like, why have these guys not been on the radio? Like, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, what do you mean? Like, I mean, we've you know been on the radio, but we haven't really pushed it with the uh, you know Sirius and everything else. And the next thing I know, we're on Sirius, and that really um, it was very inspiring to me. And it's just crazy to see how powerful something that we created has kind of become. And I'm glad it. Uh, I, I really believe in the songs, and I really love what we do, and I'm really glad that the songs are doing something for people, you know, in that way. For sure. Uh, you mentioned working through the pandemic. Uh, we're coming, of course, we're coming out of that now. Uh, mm -hmm. So what do you guys have like lined up now that we're kind of moving away and being able to do the live shows again? Well, monkey pox is uh, airborne. So no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Fingers crossed, guys. Yeah. Uh, no, now that we've got live shows, um, at the end of the month, I'm moving back to Toronto, which if you're watching this and it's September, I'm in Toronto right now. Uh, but... So, yeah, we've got the new EP coming out. Head Trip is, you know, off doing its thing at radio. We're hoping that it goes to top 40 or 30 or 20. I said if it goes top 10, then I'll get a tattoo of the artwork. Okay. I think even my dad might. I think he might be on board. If he's listening, then, you know, I don't know if he would. But I, we talked about it, and we're like, yeah, you know. You know, one of those off-beat off <laughs> off father-son yeah. conversations. 
Um, but yeah, for us next, we really want to be touring. Uh, we've actually, what's surreal to me is we've had uh, we've had record labels offer us deals, and if you told nineteen year old me that was going to happen, um, he would have crapped his pants for sure. Can I say that on air? Yeah, maybe. Yeah, you're good. Yeah, I'm good. Okay. I just didn't know, you know, try to keep it PG, but uh, I would have lost my mind. And now it's different. The music industry has shifted in a way that I think when the right label comes along with the right offer. And I just think there's a lot of work we can still do independently. And we really like much being uh, the captains of our own ship, so to speak. And I think if independently we can uh, have success at Top 40, then we still have work to do and touring and all that kind of stuff. And really just seeing what comes next. I think... With Head Trip and with all the new songs um, that we have, I can confidently say they are by far the best we've ever done. Like, they are a cut above, and I think they're going to just continue to open more doors for the band, which um, makes me happy because it's a passion project. You know, it's not something I ever... I've never been a guy who did music because I was like, uh, you know, I want to be a celebrity or something. I just really love music and really love what it's given me in my life and i want to provide that for people that are fans of us and just yeah that's really the motivating factor for me for sure uh you, did you mention that you're doing an ep now yeah so it's it's done but uh I, it's not out so it really um the next single that comes out will really be dependent on just seeing you know uh, head trip Head Trip still's got a lot of life in it, right? We've got some merch coming that's associated with Head Trip, and we've got, you know, a music video that we're gonna film. There's a lot of things that we will do before we, uh, that we, before we move into a new single. It's the the industry is kind of changing in that way, where um, singles are the new culture. You know, albums aren't really a thing anymore, which is unfortunate because I I personally love uh, the LP and listening to LPs, but. As far as what makes the most sense, it's definitely singles. And now singles kind of get serviced out like a whole record used to. And so that's just the game you have to play to be relevant, really, and to, to keep up with the constant, you know, never-ending, keep things moving. Yeah, know? I think this has definitely changed over the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. um, to me, it sounds like you, you guys are... You you've worked hard for your success, and mm. you, know, you put a lot of lot a lot of work in, and that seems to be uh, paying off for you now. Uh, what's the fan feedback been like for Head Trip or overall? Or overall? Overall, I think it's been really positive. I I find a lot of people um, that I come across they find the story really inspiring, and I think that it's lost on me that I have an impact on people when I converse with them sometimes because I don't. Uh, view myself as anything but ordinary really you know I don't have a, a huge ego like that or anything I just think that it, if you can do positive do positive I think that if you can use your existence to positively impact the existence of somebody else in this little pocket of time we're living in together then you might as well do it and if music is the way that I can have the broadest effect in that respect then that's what I'm going to do but uh, the the feedback for the music has been incredible. I'm, there's a girl in the U.S. that uh, there's multiple fan pages that make memes of us and other things. It's very, it's very interesting. Um, but, you know, I had one fan reach out and just say, like, that the music uh, literally saved their life, which is kind of something that, you know, that's one more person still here because of the songs. And I think that really speaks to the power of music one person or a hundred or whatever and yeah so it's been positive and i mean it seems to only get more and more positive and i would say that we've become a better and better band as time goes on and to your point i i would say that we're ridiculously hard working for sure we've never had anything handed to us at all and but it doesn't discourage us if anything i love an underdog story you know and for, for um, sure i think a lot of people see like overnight successes and they don't realize how much work that people have been doing to get to that overnight success mm -hmm. uh, state. But with, with overnight success, how often do they stay relevant for longer than six months? That's true. I mean, name one winner of American Idol besides Kelly Clarkson that has any sort of relevance. Yeah. Fair, right? There you go. I think that all of the bands and all of the artists that are adored and that are are relevant and that are really good are the ones that really just work and just they they're 
I met I met Blink One Eighty Two once. Yes. Actually, I, I met Blink One Eighty Two five times. Actually, <laughs> um, in one of the conversations that I had with their bassist Mark Hoppus, he just said that would like for his advice to me, and this this definitely had a profound impact on me. Was uh, I never had considered myself a super strong singer when we were younger, and he said there was always bands way more talented than them, but they were way harder workers and just too stupid to quit so many bands they knew were like super talented guys that just didn't have the tenacity and i think when i adopted that mindset it just made us you know it just i don't know i i enjoy it too it's like it's great it gives me a sense of purpose and it's definitely uh, the muse for my entire heart you know i love doing it and i don't see that changing anytime soon and then it's what's really nice honestly is like we put out Head Trip and it's already been streamed in over a hundred countries. And it's like, it's already being picked up by big stations in Toronto. And it's like, that's insane to me. It's crazy. It's crazy. I don't, cause I don't, it's not like I sit when I write songs, I'm sitting there and I'm like, well, we're going to have this many people listening to this song. I better, you know, I, I'm just like, oh, that sounds really cool. Like I really like that idea or, um, you know, like with Head Trip, uh, I'm a guy that, I tend to catastrophize sometimes, you know, and my, our manager said that to me. Well, he's like, yeah, he's like, you're always catastrophizing. You're always like worst case scenario guy. Like, Oh, this is all going to blah, blah, blah. But like when he said that I became cognizant to the fact that I do that and that it made me able to, anyways, I was getting on a plane from Calgary to Toronto to record new music. And this is in November. And I was just like walking kind of like, uh, feeling a bit anxious and when I get anxious like a good way for me to get it out of my system is to write or whatever and I was like I'm on a head trip I'm feeling violent again I'm not and I was like man that's a really cool kind of catchy kind of thing and then within the span of like 10 to 15 minutes and then getting on the plane and then like firing up my MacBook and like doing stuff on the you know flight uh, I wrote the song and nice. it was done by the time we landed and I was like I l landed and I well I guess I said manager but I meant like a guy that I, there's different people I bounce things off of. And one of the guys that I bounce stuff off of was like, I sent him just the rough, everything that I had kind of come up with. And I was like, I think this is the best song I've ever written. Like at the early stages, like I was like, it's pretty undeniable. And he's like, man, that's good. I mean, he's, he's interject, he swore, but I'm not going to repeat it obviously. But I was like, yeah, sometimes you just know, you know. Excellent. Yeah. Um, where do you see yourself like a year out? From here well i'm going to keep going to school i'm in university and i have been since the pandemic started I'm studying psychology in undergrad i was in psychology and business um no disrespect to people studying business i think it's great i think it's awesome uh it just wasn't for me so i just went fully into psychology i'm much more um on that wavelength and if i do a graduate degree where it stands i would do graduate degree in psychology to be a psychologist or in law to be a lawyer um, but in a year out, honestly, if things keep going the way they've been going, I would, I may or may not have to postpone school to just tour and to just do this thing full time because it's, it's, uh, you know, like it's becoming, I, I love that it's demanding more of my attention because it's a pretty clear indication that it's working. Um, but it, it's, it's sometimes tough to make those decisions. Like moving to Toronto is, you know, it's far from all my family and everything else. Um, and I love the city. I, I definitely love Vancouver as well and lots of cities in the States we've been to. But um, to me, I guess it's really about what's the smartest move. And yeah, so I mean, it's one of those tough things where yeah, a year from now I could see the EP will probably be out unless head trip, you know, if it goes like, let's say it hits top 10, then that's something that will last quite a while. And it really would prolong the, uh, the rolling out of music. But a year from now, I hope we are touring eight to 10 months a year. Um, and where I see myself definitely like the goal for me is I've never been a guy who's like, I'm going to play in a stadium. The goal is always like, you know, if we can get like a thousand people in a room, fit 500 to 1000 1500 you know like if you know if we could you know do something like the queen elizabeth in vancouver and sell that out you know bands like the national stuff like that like i love that the fans of those bands are so passionate about the music and the artist and it's not a celebrity thing it's more of like a, i just love what you're doing and i just it connects like to me that 
has always had way more appeal. I know there's obviously more money in playing an arena, but yeah. I've never really been in it for money. Um, I've always really just been in it because, like I said, I love it. Um, and it it gives me a reason to, to get up out of bed in the morning. You know, it's that sense of purpose. The Japanese call it ikigai, and it's that mean, translates to, like, your sense of purpose, your sense of being, your driving um, factor. And for me, it's, it's just always been there. Um, and the older I get, too, the harder it is sometimes to, to think about that. But um, sometimes it's like, well, it's a path of least resistance, you know. And I, I, I've been really enjoying school and, and everything else. But, you know, my parents are like, oh, you've been in school for this long, though, and you're, you know, you're doing well, you're on the dean's list and stuff like that. And I'm at the same time, but I'm like, yeah, but I've been doing music since like I was f- like 13, yeah, 12. And like, so, you know, it's one of those things where you just have to make that decision. And uh, at the end of the day, it's definitely like, like I said, if music demands that attention, it will, it will receive it for sure. Great. Uh, is there anything else you want to add? Buy our merch. <laughs> Just kidding. No. <laughs> well, yeah. Tell us uh, if people uh, are interested in you. Where, where do they? Every, go everybody to? has been buying our merch. I, yeah. I, I should probably sound ungrateful. We've like, we had two merch drops already, and they sold out like in a couple of days. So, uh, well, close to selling. We have like, I have like five hoodies and eight or nine shirts, and then I've got <clears throat> new long sleeve shirts coming. And fall is coming, and uh, in this area, yeah, fall is here in a few weeks. So. Yep. Uh, so where do people go to if they want to buy that stuff? VioletNightMusic.com And, okay, here's an Easter egg for you. The new merch has already dropped on VioletNightMusic.com slash store. Um, the new long sleeve, but we haven't announced it anywhere. It's been kind of a thing. Our, so our Instagram and our other socials have pretty big followings, but our Twitter doesn't. So I always announce stuff first on Twitter as like a little like, you know, so... Um, I'll announce it there tomorrow. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it's probably, I think it's really cool. They're really cool long sleeves. I don't, I wish I could wear it. It's one of those things where like, I love our merch and I think the designs are fantastic, but then I'm like, well, people think I'm a douchebag if I wear (laughs) shirts for my own band. Uh, maybe, you know, Yeah. but I mean, that's like, you know, but Hey, I mean, I could, it's, it's a good conversation starter. It's like, why are you wearing this shirt? It's like, well, I like Stephen King stuff, Yeah. you know? How do you, uh, how do people follow you on social media? Um, well, we could do a how to guide, you know, those like wiki how to's. Yeah. They would, so they would open their phones and they would go to the app of their choosing, be it Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter or TikTok. We're starting on TikTok. Everybody on our team is like, Connor, you need to TikTok more. And I'm like, bro. (laughs) I, I'm sorry to anybody out there listening that loves TikToking. I am not a fan. Uh, I'm not a fan of social media in general. I definitely, it's means to an end, right? And yeah. it's a way to engage. And I'm thankful that people care what we have to say on there. Um, if it was up to me, though, somebody else would do it all for me. <laughs> yeah. And I would just uh, I would just be like, that's cool. Um, so I could, yeah, like when I wrote Antiheroes, I took almost six to eight months off of social media just to focus on writing. Yeah. Great idea. Uh, but bad for the algorithm and the overlords on yeah, social media. For sure. Definitely weren't thrilled. But uh, yeah, no. So if you go to Instagram, uh, Facebook is just Violet Night. Instagram, Violet Night Music. If you want to Snapchat at me, at Connor Pull one is my Snapchat. And we can snap and we can chat. Both of those things are definitely viable options. So uh, face, yeah, like Facebook. TikTok is Violet Night Music, I believe. And then Instagram is Violet, or no, Twitter is Violet Night Band. But VioletNightMusic.com, VioletNightMusic.com is the place to go because it has links to everything. Um, And I usually explain to people, like if they're unfamiliar, I say Violet is in the color purple and night as in nighttime because we get violent as (laughs) in punching you in the face and night as in darkness a lot. Um... And I, I think that's also like a David Harbour movie or something. Is it? I think so, yeah. Yeah, fair. Um, and he's super popular now because of Stranger Things, obviously. Yeah. 
that's one of those things. And people often misspell my name, like C O N N O R, Connor. But I get Coner a lot, or C O N E R, which is just fantastic. <laughs> um, C O N O R or C O N N E R. Yeah. It just shows how the um, the education system is failing us. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I doubt it. I think it's just one of those things where you can spell color two ways, and you can spell Connor like 300 ways according to our fan base. So. Excellent. Well, we're going to wrap things up by playing a Head Trip. Do you want to introduce it to the people out there in Radio Land? The people out there in Radio Land, fasten your seat belts if you're in a vehicle and uh, get ready. This is Head Trip by Violet Knight on Peace FM. Minnesota First Nations, and uh, we're here at Pemmican Days, and uh, tell us, what is Pemmican Days? Yeah, hey, welcome. Uh, glad you guys are here. It's just our annual um, Aboriginal Days. We just gather and be festive and, and practice our culture, try to try to bring it back, put all of our traditional games up for, uh, for everybody to come watch and have fun. Well, what kind of games can people play? Uh, well, we got all kinds. We got DC, just hand games, horseshoes, those are the two big ones. Um, bow and arrow, axe throwing, TP making, uh, tea boiling, oh, there's quite a bit. Um, moose call, elk call, horse call, there's a whole bunch of activities for the kids like slingshot and endurance race. We do a, a, an endurance race for adults and kids. Yeah. Adults one has uh, running, biking, horseback, bareback, horseback riding, um, and canoeing. Wow, that's yeah. awesome. The third, this is the 33rd annual 33rd, meeting. yeah. We started at 36 years ago, okay. but it, uh, with COVID we missed a couple and just historically there was one other one missed. So, yeah. so which was your favorite event? Uh, to watch, I like to have the PEC. Hand games are my favorite to watch. Uh, to be part of, probably horseshoes. Yeah. So why is the, is it your favorite to watch at the Pagisi? It's just the the energy. Everybody's into it. They're dancing. They're moving. You got the drums going. It's just a good time. You know, makes you wakes up your spirit. And I know I you said you guys had a meat rack there. Can you tell us a little bit about that? There's some moose there. Yeah. So we have um, our our local um, native hunters go out uh, the week prior to Pemmican Days to. Uh, try to find um, bull moose to provide meat and food for the uh, the weekend. The, they also su supply the meat for um, our dry meat cutting competition, which people go in and the people who have the nicest stretch of uh, dry meat win. So, yeah, oh, it's really nice. fun. Yeah. And the one, the person who got it was? Uh, Tom Aaron, I believe, was our, our first big place Tom? winner. Yeah, big Tom. Yeah. <laughs> so, no, good on him. That uh, contributes lots. It's a super important part to the weekend, so. Okay. That's nice. People can go over there and cut off a chunk of meat, cook it right there on the fire, and eat it. And you get well, fresh you can meat. actually cook it yourself. Oh yeah, you can go in there, cut off a chunk of meat, and fry it up, and you know all different cuts of meat in there. So cool. uh, there's always stuff cooking on the rack, so you can go in there and yeah, it's nice to get some. Well, thank you for talking to us. Game. Appreciate it. Yeah, you guys definitely. Have fun. Yeah. Thanks, thanks, thanks for coming. Enjoy it. Thanks.